the environment I'm working on here today, I've got two databases. And this one is a 11.2 database, 11.204. And here I have a 12.102 database. I'm not using 12.2 for this today. 12.2 is still only available in the cloud. And I didn't want to introduce another variable into possible communications problems today. So as with the whole course, we'll normally be contrasting the way things work in 11 with the way they work in 12. Now, SQL plan baselining was introduced in release 11. I used it in 11.1, and in 11.1, I think it was pretty buggy and caused some awkward problems. And in my opinion, it largely stabilized in 11.2. Have you seen situations where performance has degraded? Because that is what SQL plan baselining is all about. You have a SQL that runs well today, and tomorrow it's appalling. It's instability in the Oracle environment. Ever since the cost-based optimizer was introduced in release 11, sorry, release 7, ever since the cost-based optimizer came in, Oracle has had problems of instability. Code runs well today and badly tomorrow. And it's because of Oracle's dynamic parsing model. SQL plan management forces stability. It forces stability. It gives you a guarantee that your code will never degrade. A code guaranteeing your performance will never degrade. That's what SQL plan management gives you. And for the upgrade to 12, that is particularly important. But most of you, or many of you, have not actually covered this. So I'll quickly run through how it works in release 11. And then we'll see the new features. I'll try to do it in just five minutes. So it all relies on two instance parameters. Show parameter baselines. These are the two critical parameters. To enable SQL plan baselining, we set those two parameters to true. There we go. Put those two parameters on true. The capture SQL plan baselines parameter means that from now on, whenever we pass a SQL statement, we will save the execution plan. Save it. This parameter, use SQL plan baselines, means that whenever we pass a statement, we will check have we already captured a baseline for it? And that allows us the ability to say, is the plan we've just developed the same as the one we previously captured? And if the plan we develop is the same, OK, we use it. But if the plan we develop is different, we block it and revert to the previously captured plan. Your execution plans will never change. You stabilize the system through upgrades from 11 to 12, through applying a patch set, through changing a parameter, through converting the database from a single instance on Windows to a four node rack on AIX. Whatever the change is, simply setting these parameters stabilizes the environment. So simple demonstration of how it works. I've enabled the capability. I'm going to work in the Scott demonstration schema, and we'll try to set up a problem. So what I'm going to do is enable the auto trace facility and I'm going to run a query. My query is select star from emp natural join dept where job equals president. And Oracle has already captured a baseline for it. It realizes the statement may be repeated and we're using that baseline because those parameters are untrue. We've captured the baseline and now we're using that execution plan. And that execution plan says do a full scan of emp, picking out the presidents and then loop through the index on depths to do the join. Simple plan. Now, as an example of what's happened, we can see what's happening by querying the view. Describe DBA SQL plan baselines. And this view will tell you about all the execution plans that have been captured so far. And for each SQL plan, you get the text of the statements, it's given the name, you can see the name right there, text of the statements, name of the plan, how it was captured, all sorts of useful information about it. And a simple query against that statement, what I'm going to do is pull out the one statement we've got. So I shall run a query against that statement, but view, select SQL text, and is it accepted? Where SQL text like percent %JW%, percent, and that's because my code itself, I put in my initials as a hint, just so I could find it in the data dictionary. And there you see the plan. There's the statements, 
there's the plan name, and yes, it is accepted for use. What happens if I make a change? Any change at all, the change I'm going to make is attempting to tune the statement. Perhaps I look at this code and I think, hey, why am I doing a full table scan there? So I'm going to try to tune the statement by indexing, create index job i on the job column of the empty table, create an index. What happens to my code? Well, my end users come in to work and they run the code. Same query. Absolutely no change to the plan because we're using the baseline. So I've stabilized the system. And that's an example of how simple it is to do. No matter what changes happen, the plans won't change. But the trouble is, that's blocked every change, whether it's good or bad. Take a look at what's happening in the SQL management base by rerunning my query. Select SQL text plan name from the DBA SQL plan baselines. And now we see there are two plans for that same statement. So what happened is the first time I ran the statement, this plan was captured and it's accepted for use. So where did this come from? Well, when I created that index, Oracle did a new hard pass. It came up with a new plan and it's been blocked. So we're blocking all new plans. That plan might be good, it might be bad. I need to test it. And this is the 11G problem. If you look at the package, DBMS SPM, DBMS SPM, that package is, this is the package that manages, that does SQL plan management, manages the baselines. There's a function, evolve SQL plan baseline. The evolve procedure or function, you give it a plan and various other options, and it tests the plan to see if it's good or bad. So I shall run it. It returns a C log, which is a bit irritating, but let's create it, and then we'll be ready to proceed to our version 12 new feature. So create a variable, which is a C log, execute the code, execute evolve SQL plan baseline for the plan I'm interested in. Well, the plan I'm interested in is this new one that was developed and is not accepted for use. Now, what happens now is Oracle tests the plan. It takes a good long look at it. Well, such a simple statement is very quick. It takes a good long look at it to see if it's good or if it's bad and puts the results into that variable. So let's see what Oracle thought. There we go. So here's what the evolve procedure or function did. There's the plan I asked it to look at. There's all sorts of tuning and options you can do here. It tested it pretty quickly, and it reckons it's much better than the baseline. So it's been changed to accept it. And there's all sorts of interesting figures about what it makes of the new baseline plan. My end users now run the same software, no change to their software at all. They're still going behind the back of the application. They join m to depth and look at that, it's using an index. And we are now using the new baseline that has now been accepted. So that's how it works in release 11. You enable your parameters and that stabilizes the system. But you, the DBA, have to monitor DBA SQL plan baselines to see what's actually happening. Are new plans being developed? For example, if you've applied a patch set, or if, you, you know, if you've gathered statistics, you gather stats, and a bunch of new plans are created. Are they good or are they bad? I don't know, but SQL plan management will block them. You then find them and test them with the evolve procedure. And if the plan is indeed better, it's permitted, and if the plan is worse, it's blocked. So that issue of code degrading after any sort of change will never happen again. But the problem is, it's a huge amount of work. So let's go to release 12.